Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be presenting my first winter forecast for the upcoming season of 2024 to 2025. I'll be doing another one in the beginning of November and one more final one in the beginning of December. So yeah, let's get right into it. So starting off with them. Um, patterns and analysis we're going to start off with the enzo pattern slash teleconnection so the enzo overview so this graph chart this chart i have right now represents our current observations and past observations of our enzo and enzo is very important el nino la nina very important to our climatology of the winter so enzo is basically a body of water that is monitored right off the coasts of southern Mexico into South America, and it really does reflect our winter in a big, big way. So very important to look at, if not one of the most things, most important things to look at. So starting out with our latest value is negative 0.762 Celsius. So this is all in Celsius. That means we are in a I'd say weak La Nina. So anything within half a degree Celsius is kind of like enzo neutral, whether it's enzo neutral warm or enzo neutral cool. And then 0 0.5 and 1 is weak, 1 and 1.5 is moderate, and then beyond 1.5 is strong, or sometimes even historical. So right now we're in 0 0.7 below, which is La Nina, which is right around a weak La Nina. And taking a look at past observations, we have continued steadily being able to cool down into these waters. Now we have had this recent rebound, however, a continuous cooling of a continuing cooling of these waters are expected to resume very soon. And so these are very important to what's going to happen. So El Nino is above the average. El Nino is above average, which we don't have anything below average is a La Nina, which is what we have right now. And then anything within 0 0.0 and 0 0.5 is is technically a neutral. And yeah, so what does our typical La Nina bring? Uh, that also depends on our forecast La Nina. So our forecast is that resu resumed cooling of our waters getting all the way as low as between 1 and 1 1.5, around 1.25, which is a moderate La Nina. We then see a rebound into weak territory and some models bringing it back into neutral by the time it's January and February. We get into just a solid weak La Nina, some showing moderate, some showing neutral. I'd bet on a very solid weak La Nina and so that brings um, specific impacts on our conditions in the U.S. This is the latest update by the way. So what does our typical La Nina bring us? So this isn't weak La Nina. This is just our typical La Nina. Wet and warm conditions for the southeast and mid-Atlantic states, as well as areas of the um, Midwest and bleeding into the central U.S. Dry conditions for the desert southwest, cold for the north central U.S., and wet for the Pacific Northwest. And then everywhere else, just average. So a weak La Nina tends to dig the jet stream a little more south, okay, bringing a little more cooler air into areas further south. Warmer air continues for the southeast, dry air continues for the southwest, and wet air continues and kind of bulges a little in a weak La Nina. And the warm air kind of is suppressed just a little more. So technically a weak La Nina is what you would kind of want to see for an average winter for the eastern two-thirds of the U.S. and even for the western U.S. Now, with that being said, there's many other patterns we also have to look at. One is the, the North Atlantic or North American North Atlantic Oscillation, also known as NAO. That's the abbreviation. So in the negative mode, we see cold and snowy conditions in the area in the eastern seaboard, warm and less sea ice over in Canada, cold and dry in northern areas of Europe, and warm and wet in southern areas of Europe. And what causes this is a high pressure or blocking in the North Atlantic. Now, that's NAO negative, negative. Now, NAO positive causes warm conditions in the eastern uh, U.S., eastern seaboard. Cold and more sea ice in Canada, warm and wet in the northern 
areas of Europe and cool and dry in the southern areas of Europe. This is because we have no blocking at all, zero blocking to provide any cooler conditions for the U.S. So that's the NAO. Another teleconnection is the PNA. This causes above average temperatures in the western U.S. and below average temperatures in the eastern U.S. And then for negative PNA, cooler temperatures in the e western U.S. and warmer conditions in the eastern U.S. So positive PNA, warm in the west, cold in the east, negative PNA, cold in the west, warm in the east. Now, that causes our temperature forecast, okay? So those three connections, NAO, PNA, and ENZO, main three connections that all work together to influence our winter. So this temperature forecast, my thoughts, computer models, other people's thoughts, teleconnections, more data, graphs, past analogs, etc. So above average temperatures is what I am expecting for the whole southern tier and into the eastern seaboard. So let's get better. So in from southern tier into the eastern seaboard is where I'm expecting above average temperatures all in these areas, okay? Especially in the desert southwest and southeast. Now in the white is average where I expect equal chances of below average and warmer average temperatures. And then below average for the North Central and Pacific Northwest, where I expect cold shots and much more, much, much more moisture along with them. So soak that in, pause the video if you need to, but that is my temperature forecast. Now, getting into our precipitation forecast. Above average for the northern tier of the U.S., below average for the southern tier of the U.S., as simple as that, and then average in between. Now, with this above, we do have some hot spots above average in the Pacific Northwest. Usually, we just see that strong flow of moist conditions from low pressure systems out in the Pacific and above average in the Midwest as we see systems diving through and causing snow, rain, everything, and overall just above pre average precipitation for the Midwest. So, those are two hot spots. And then for the below average, just overall very dry in the south southern. southern uh, desert Southwest and Florida. Those are the main two hotspots uh, I would be paying attention to for this winter. So soak that in. Pause the video again if you need to. But that is my precipitation forecast for this winter. Now, my overall forecast. What you guys all been waiting for. So we're going to work our way west to east, starting out with the Pacific Northwest. We have, I expect, cool, wet, and white conditions. So cool, wet, precipitation, cooler conditions, and in, especially in higher elevations, white conditions, as in snow. So that includes main states of Washington, Oregon, and areas of Idaho, Nevada, and northern areas of California. Now moving south, hot and dry conditions. I expect overall just a typical hot, dry La Nina winter. It will be hot, dry Yes, some stormy conditions, some precipitation, definitely possible, but overall just expect a very drought-like winter. And then moving back north, big mountain snow is what I'm expecting in this purple region. So especially in the higher elevations, notable in areas of California, areas of Nevada, Cal uh, Colorado near Denver, all I'm expecting, and the mountain ranges in Montana, I'm expecting some very, very heavy big mountain snow in that area. So be prepared for a very nice snowy winter, depending on how you guys like snow, of course. And then we'll continue moving back out east into this snowy and cold region. This is where we're going to have lots of tracks diving out from the Pacific Northwest, maybe even merging from the Southeast. And so lots of times you will be on the colder and cold snowier side for areas of Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, areas of Colorado and the Dakotas, or yeah, or really just Wyoming and areas of Montana. So that doesn't mean you guys will get rain. That doesn't mean you guys will just get snow. You guys will see rain too, but I do expect a snowy and cold winter for you guys over there. Now moving south and east in the cyan blue, shots of cold is what I'm expecting in this, this like kind of in the southern portion of the lower 48. So we're going to have lots of times where our jet stream flexes and comes down more cold and if we do see a storm that pairs up with that the perfect time with colder air coming down from the south we could see some nice snow and cold for those areas don't expect 
anything much. I still think it will be below average cold or below average snow and warmer than average temperatures. However, shots cold still very possible. Now, moving southeast from that in this kind of green, greenish, dark green area, swampy colors, stormy, humid, but overall generally dry. Now, why do I say stormy and humid? If we were to get a very massive system or even just some other little systems that come and merge, we would likely see severe weather and storms that would possibly trail along with these storms. So that's why I think it would be stormy and humid, that storms from that moist tropical air that might merge with colder air causing snow and storms, I feel like that's why it would be stormy and humid. And then, but overall, besides those big storms that come through, just generally dry is what I'm expecting. So another typical La Nina winter for those in the southeast. Moving north above the Cyan, we see our winter battle zone. So that includes areas of the southern Midwest and the dreaded big areas, snow-starved I-95 corridor. Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City, Boston, Hartford, Connecticut, I don't know, Wilmington, Delaware, Trenton, New Jersey. Now we're getting a little more... Low a little more specific, but all these areas, Richmond, Roanoke, all these areas, winter battle zones. It's going to be very interesting. Snow, ice, rain, very, very interesting winter on tap, though I don't think it will be as intense as the past winters, but a winter battle zone of all types of precipitation, as always, is very likely this winter. Now, Moving interior and further north and west, interior snows is likely. So if we do see some storms that turn, tend to cut in and kind of cut like that, or mainly just along the seaboard, I do think interior snows and heavy at times is very likely for areas of Maine, then New Hampshire, Vermont, most of upstate New York, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Ohio, and mountainous regions of the Appalachian mountain chain. And lastly, moving further north and west, this big dark mean red area the worst of winter very very heavy snow big time storms and big sh cold shots sometimes arctic and frigid is very likely for this area so winter will not let you down if you are over here i do expect a very big winter this includes montana areas of montana dakotas northern nebraska iowa whole state of minnesota wisconsin northern areas of illinois indiana ohio entire state of Michigan, and areas of Pennsylvania and New York, where I expect lake effect snow to be very prevalent over in, I'd say, these areas if you are located over here. And you could even extend it a little bit over here. So, that's that overall forecast. Soak it in, screenshot it, share it, um, pause the video if you'd like to, to go over it one more time. But lastly, what we're going to go over is what has changed since my last previous preliminary forecast. So I expect an early start to winter, which seems likely for most of the lower 48, especially the eastern two-thirds of the U.S. So an early banging start to winter is what I'm expecting. This includes early frosts, first snows, and overall a bang to start winter looks very possible for East Coast snow lovers. That's what I'm expecting. However, as we progress, getting deeper in the winter, especially into February and late January, I feel like it shifts milder and into March. I expect it to shift milder, less snowier, and to the end of, uh, end of winter for the eastern two-thirds of the U.S. And so that's what I'm saying is the opposite for the western U.S. So the eastern U.S. expect a bang start to winter and a boring end. And for the western U.S., I, I'd say a boring start, which gets more interesting as we go through. Now, that's why I overall think. Overall, it's still looking very, my current first forecast looks very similar to my preliminary forecast, and it's still very far out and lots of change. So I'd say you definitely take this into mind, but don't judge too much. Don't take my word for this, as there's still lots to go over. So thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. God bless.